World Whiskey Review, brought to you by me, Man in the Sands. Come and join me. Hats off. Game on. Welcome back. We are still on our NAS theme, non-age statement whiskies. We have two left in our theme, and today we are in Japan. And first and foremost, let me show you this beautiful bottle. This design is of 36 views of Mount Fuji, depicting the Japanese native red crown cranes by Ketsushika Hokusai. This is stunning. Just take a look. I think the bottle's stunning. That's why I'm holding it up. I rarely do this with many bottles. Absolutely stunning. Now, on the bottle, like anything, you can read the bottle. It tells you what it is. It tells you where it's from. It tells you what it has been matured in, the Mizunara cask. This is 48%. You may not have seen it on the front. It's within the Japanese on the back. 48%. It's punchy. It's from the Matsui Brewery of the Koreyoshi Distillery. The Koreyoshi Distillery, if you wonder where that is, think Kyoto, go northwest. To Mount Dayson, the crystal waters of Mount Dayson, running through volcanic rocks, filtering it to provide sake and whiskey of magnitude. So what are we talking about here? Why did I want to review this with you? Well, first and foremost, we must consider what is Japanese whiskey. Traditionally, Japanese whiskey is scotch or single malt or uh, blended whiskey from Scotland that has then been married in their own casks in the Japanese distillery with the water of their Japanese local reservoir, mountain, fresh spring, etc., used onto that whiskey. Now, there are a couple of single malt whiskies here. In fact, there's even the uh, pure malt reference from Nika's uh, Takusura whiskey. One of my favorites, I must say, for a quick drop that's smooth. However, not all Japanese whiskies are a Japanese whiskey. So the reference here for example, of this being a single malt Japanese whiskey. Is it really? So let's consider that now for the Mizunara cask and why that could qualify as Japanese whiskey, but not necessarily single malt whiskey. I'm not gonna hung up on this. I just want you to realize that what you're buying is not necessarily what you're thinking in your head when you consider single malt whiskey in Scotland. Mizunara casks are exceptionally expensive. They are native to Japan. They are difficult to work with, and like many Japanese influences, they take time and patience and let the elements come to themselves over a long period of time. They do say that at least 15 to 20 years, whiskey needs to be matured in Mizunara casks to remove the sharpness of that influence. So therefore, American casks, American oak casks, the European cherry cask, they're much easier, more affordable to use. So naturally that makes a Mizunara cask whiskey more expensive by right, and you're accepting, oh, sorry, expecting something exceptional. Well, what do we have here? Again, I'm going to show you the bottle. This is Jim Murray's 2020 Whiskey Bible single malt Japanese whiskey winner. For those who do not know Jim Murray, he is a legend in whiskey review and tasting circles, and his Bible is the book that many people, if not all, go by. In addition to that, it was a 2019 double gold winner at the San Francisco International Spirit Competition. There are only four non-age statement Japanese whiskies that have ever won competitions, or may not even have been gold, but have got the medals. Of course, if you go back to around 2012, 2013, I was predicting that Japan was, a whiskey from Japan was going to win a gold at the World International World Spirit competition. That's a lot for me to get out, a lot for me to say, and I think I survived being tongue-tied 
with the Japanese names. I apologise for any poor pronunciation. So getting on to this whisky. Beautiful to look at. No added colouring. All natural. Water of Mount Dason. I don't believe this is single malt. It wasn't created and distilled at the distillery. I believe it is um, Scottish whisky that has been used. But in the Mizunara cask for the maturation and the Japanese water. So it's Japanese whisky and it's a medal winner. And so it should be revered for that alone. The competition is incredible to win those. So fair play to you, Matsui, with your Kodayoshi distillery. Northwest. Kyoto. So shall we get on with it? What are we expecting from this? Well, the Mizunara cask may mean a bit of sharpness. Equally, it should be different to anything I've tasted coming out of Europe and America. Do be aware that some of the Scottish producers have started using Mizunara casks. Also be aware that with Japan, they were not expecting to suddenly be trendy and to be wanted as much as they have been since winning awards and getting recognised more and more with the publicity. That means that their whisky is becoming in short supply because they hadn't anticipated how much they needed to produce for their aged and their single malt whiskies. So it's harder to find and there have been more non-aged statement whiskies coming out of Japan because of that very reason. Back to the whisky. Colour, pale, straw-like. What do you expect? Interesting colour. I've not drunk a whisky with colouring like this. Rakia-esque to me. Rakia coming from the uh, Balkans area, for me it means it's uh, been made similar to pears coming through the fermentation process. And that could be the sake influence. Ooh. Light, a bit Dranbuie-esque as well. If you've ever had Dranbuie, it's like a whiskey liqueur. Right, Bess, I think we better go in, haven't we? Hats off. Game on. Slanja. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh. Lovely, lovely. Now, peppery, punchy on the lips, peppery. However, now feeling it in the mouth, I felt it here first as a glow, similar to a drum yui. I felt it at the middle and the fore of the mouth, full of taste, and I'm trying to register in my brain. Now it's at the back. But it doesn't hold on. It's not holding on. It's going to go quickly. But you're feeling it here more. Isn't that interesting? So it's almost like it's come in and given you a slap, missed you for a kiss and gone in for a hug and a tickle. Fascinating. Complex. Similar to what I had anticipated and yet blown my mind by the way it's holding on here, but no longer here. How interesting. So what does that mean for me? Well, from a tasting point of view, it's interesting. I liked it. It wasn't too sharp. There is a bit of sharpness there, no doubt from the Mizunara cask. Sour, bit sour. I'm thinking I am between candy and pear, and maybe pear drops. It's got that kind of sweet and sourness to it. It depends where you're focusing in your mouth. I'm going back in. Mmm. Well, I do like that. Different to anything I've had before. Surprisingly easy for 48%. <sighs> Holding on peppery at the beginning of the lips. But it's pleasant in the mouth because it doesn't hold on. And I think with the sharpness, that'd be too much if it did. A bit of vanilla is there. Candied fruit. No, candy, just candy. I'm saying fruit because I'm thinking of the pear. But for me, it's a candied 
and it's pearish and a bit of vanilla. Well, well, well. Now we're going to try it with the Padre. So I have another glass for you. In goes the Padre. Now, because of the sharpness, I added a little bit more of the Holy Spirit than I normally would because it's going to need something to dent it. You know, a little drop isn't going to bring out much from this whiskey because it's shallow and it has depth. It's that confused whiskey. Was it a sake? Was it a whiskey? Did they know what they were doing with it? Well, I like it. I can see why it's won medals. And Jim Murray's no fool. It's larger. It loses some of the sharpness, as hoped with the water. It makes it more palatable for those who are less used to drinking whiskey and a stronger percentage whiskey. It gives a little bit of a fizz, a lovely feeling like a tickle, and I say gum for tickle. With the water, you don't feel the glow as much, but you feel it at the back more like it's hanging on. It doesn't want to let you go. It doesn't. And I keep looking down at the bottle because I can't help it. I mean, that's just stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. So let's go back to what I'm thinking. With the water. Easy drop. Different, nice. I think a lot of people would like it. Brings out more of a honeydew taste. Naked as nature intended. That's the one for me. Because it gives me that tickle. It lets me know it's here. Little slap, tickle. I want to dance. I want to play with it. I like it. Give it some when you try it and do try it. Price-wise, bit pricey because of the Mizunara task. Sorry, Mizunara cask. And what it is, you're averaging between 90 euro to 160, 70 euro a bottle. It's that wide a range. It really depends on your stockist. For example, I bought this bottle, um, the crimped of $100 off the retail price. It was at um, approximately $200. I bought it for $120 or 110, something like that. I think with tax, $120. Um, would I pay that again? Yes, I think I would because it's so different. It's unique and that's something special in the whiskey world. Very different and something wonderful to have, to hand, to show and to share. And with that, God bless you. Good night. Look after yourselves. Enjoy life. I'm out. I'm not adding the Padre to this. I'm going to myself another splish, splash, splosh and a dram. Look after yourselves. Take care during these times. Please do comment if you have any questions. I'll give a brief description of the whiskey. Uh, I'm tongue-tied from the Japanese, trying not to insult anyone who's Japanese with my poor pronunciation. I'll give a brief description uh, for the video itself. And uh, we will be looking at Japanese whiskey in more detail as part of Whiskey 101. Slanger. Mmm. Yes, it's like a, oh, I, mm, a bit floral, mm, love it. Take care.